Good evening. I'll call to order the March 1st, 2021 meeting of the Arvada City Council and call upon Councilmember Bob Pfeiffer. Would you all please join me in a moment of silent reflection? And now for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Kristen Rush, if you'll do the roll call. Mayor Williams. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Miller. Here. Councilmember Pfeiffer. Here. Councilmember Ford. Here. Councilmember Jones. Here. Councilmember Marriott. Here. Councilmember Simpson. Here. All council present and accounted for. We have minutes from January 25th and February 1st of 2021. Any changes or corrections? Seeing no request to amend them, they will stand approved as presented. Tonight, it's my distinct honor and privilege to be able to recognize Judge Michael Matassa. Judge, if you'd like to come down to the podium here. And if, I don't know if you've got cameras, you're more than willing, uh, welcome to come over on the other side so that you can get the judge's good side versus our good side. So. <laughs> Whereas, I'll read the proclamation that we are presenting to a certificate of recognition that we're giving to Judge Matassa today. Whereas Judge Michael S. Matassa has had a distinguished 35-year career on the Arvada Municipal Court bench, both as a relief judge and most recently the interim presiding judge who has served the interests of justice by fairly and impartially deciding matters brought before him through strict adherence to the Colorado Code of Judicial Conduct and whereas Judge Matassa has played a critical role in the establishment of the Judge Mentor Program, an alternative sentencing option for juvenile defendants and their parents to meet individually with a judge for positive adult mentoring outside of, a fam outside of the family to provide a safe space for pro-social conversations that promote positive behavioral changes. And whereas in January of 2020, Judge Matassa was asked by the city council to become the interim presiding judge, and he accepted the responsibilities with the highest levels of professionalism and integrity while guiding the court through the pandemic. And whereas under Judge Matassa's leadership, the Arvada Municipal Court implemented virtual arraignments and trials in order to resume effective operation of the court and was the first city unit within Arvada City Hall to reopen in-person services. Now, therefore, the Arvada City Council, on behalf of the entire city of Arvada team, would like to recognize, honor, and give thanks to Judge Michael Matassa for his exceptional service as interim presiding judge for the Arvada Municipal Court throughout a very challenging 2020. We appreciate your continued, dedicated service to our community and the Arvada Municipal Court, signed by myself as mayor and all members of the city council issued this first day of March, 2021. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. And I'll mask up to present this to you and then certainly would like you to make a few comments, Judge. I will make a few. I won't be too long. <laughs> you know how judges are. They, don't, they never talk. So I came to Arvada when I was 15 years old. Lived in Arvada every year except maybe a year and a half when I was in Wheat Ridge, first married. Uh, I have five children, nine grandchildren, and some of them are in Arvada, Wheat Ridge area, but they're all present tonight. I have my five children and my granddaughter, Ava, is here. Um, needless to say, I love Arvada and I've been here and as a 15 year old, I never would have expected that I would be here at my age getting a proclamation as a judge, never thought that. Uh, I remember digging in my yard, I remember running for football through the streets um, but I never thought that I would be here tonight, and I really do appreciate it. It's, it's something that 
doesn't happen to everybody, I, I'm, I'm honored to do that. I would like to mention that when I was approached, um, the previous judge had resigned and the court was, uh, we were kind of wondering what would happen. And we had a little meeting and I said, I stood up and I said, I know what I'm doing and you guys know what you're doing. We're gonna make it through this. Well, the next day, Mr. Devin was in my office saying, we talked about it, would you consider helping the court in getting it through this time? And I said, sure. I, I didn't take long to think about it, but I, I agreed. And um, I wasn't totally prepared what was going to come, but the first two months um, was normal court. We had benches and we had full courtrooms. And then suddenly the pandemic hit. And I was thinking, well, that'll go away. And it didn't go away. And suddenly I heard building is shutting down, court's shutting down. And it's like, well, what are we gonna do? Um, I met with Mayor Williams and I met with uh, Mr. Devin. And what I asked him was, what do you want? And they said, we'd like you to bring stability to the court, keep it calm, and let's bring the court back into the city. And I thought, I, I think I can do that. So we, we proceeded through a time where we had no defendants. Uh, we worked really hard with facilities. Uh, we worked uh, with the city attorney's office and we brought um, chairs in, moved the benches out, put plastic up. And after about four or five weeks, it was a, we were allowed to have people come back in the court. We started, I think, with four people in the courtroom, and then we went up to 15 people. And that continued until uh, sometime in October. And, and suddenly it was like, we have to shut down again. So we went virtual, and we made it, and we do virtual court. Never done that before, and we did virtual court. We actually did virtual Tuesday afternoons preliminary hearing or pretrial conferences through the whole summer. And I think that's something that could well stay in the future. I tried to work with the city attorney and, and my whole point was the, the court is the third branch of government. Since I've been here, city council has never told us what to do as far as judging and, and making decisions. But <clears throat> my thought all along was this should be part of the government. So to do that, I talked with the mayor, I talked with, with Mr. Devin, and um, I decided when I did court orders, I ran them by the city attorney's office. I said, would you help me write these orders? Uh, I may have been able to write them myself, but I thought if I have them write them, I'm gonna get <clears throat> our attorney's legal experience because there could be appeals. We had to work with continuing jury trials. We had other trials. We have the speedy trial problem. And we still, you know, so I entered an order tolling the, the speedy trials, but I got advice. My whole thought was we need, to, the court needs to work with the rest of the city and, you know, bring it back into the, into the city. So that's what we did. Um, it was a good experience for me. I didn't know what to expect. It's probably one of the best times of my life, really, of, of having the chance. I've been an attorney for years, had my own firm most of the time, and, uh, and a sole practitioner. But working here with a group of people really gave me a different insight into life and into what it's like to, to work for an organization. So I really appreciate that, that ability that you gave me, that I could do it for the year. But here's the deal. I'm getting an honor, that's fine. I could not have done it without the staff. <clears throat> and I'd like to just talk about a couple of them. <clears throat> not a couple, all of them. First, Val Marino. She was here when it started. And Val was, uh, <clears throat> he, she and I have worked together for many, many years. And this was the first time that I would get to be the judge and she would get to be the, the court administrator. And we thought that was great. And so we worked hard, uh, and, and Val 
and I worked together and, and got along and, and made things happen. Suddenly, Andy Jones decided she was going to retire, I think, for family reasons. And someone named Mary McKenna, who was right here, popped into our life and was tremendous. I think she came from Wheat Ridge Court and really helped us as the deputy court administrator to um, keep going. And she started right at the beginning or right after the pandemic started. So she never really saw how we were before, but she, uh, she did a great job and we couldn't have made it through without her. And then Val decided that she was going to retire after all these years. And I thought, what the heck? She and I just get to work together. Okay, Val, I guess it's, it's what you need to do. So we picked uh, a new court administrator and that's always difficult. But I'll tell you, Sharon Dunlap was a great pick and she's here tonight. And I worked with her and learned a lot. She has a little different technique uh, than Val had. Both of them are really professional. But Sharon has led us through this and actually is the driving force behind us going virtual. She has done that before and I told her, really? And she said, yeah, we're gonna do that. Um, she's a very good addition as the court administrator. However, it wasn't us doing it, none of the three or four of us. It was the staff. We, we could not have done what we needed to do. They made calls, they continued cases, they talked to people on the phone, they made things happen. So one of them's here tonight, Corey Vasquez. There she is, uh, a fantastic clerk. I think she knows more than everybody in the, uh, and if not, she will say she does. <laughs> She's invaluable to the court. Uh, we have Vicki Wire, Terry Farley, Abby Cook, Tammy Hedlund. Those are the, the, the ones that were with us through the really tough times. Um, Tammy Rice, you all know Tammy Rice. She was with us too and she's been here for years, but then she took an assignment, I think with the OSS program. And I think is, I think she's retiring, but I don't think she has yet. But all of those were with us through the really tough times. And we have now added three more, Vicki Wilcox, Marsha Buckley, and Tracy Harbo. And they are good. Uh, they haven't, they've been here maybe, you know, since October or so. But they, they fit right in and we have a great team. So I think you all should be happy with the way the team runs the court. And I don't want to forget one other person, Tyler McGuirt. He is the new probation officer. But I'll tell you, Tyler, back in January, when we had a shortage of people, came in and was one of the clerks. And he sat there doing the job of the clerks. He wasn't trained to, they told him what to do, he learned how to do it. He set up videos, it ran really smooth. So he was a very good addition as the probation department. But he, he goes beyond what he was hired to do. So he's been in there helping the clerks. I'd like to thank Judge Leonard, Judge Toronto, Judge Daly. Judge Daly's here tonight. Um, Judge Toronto's been around not quite as long as I have, but he's been here. But we have very good judges here. And, and what I can tell you is uh, Arvada really, at least the court, really cares about people. And I know he, uh, Mayor Williams mentioned the Judge Mentor Program, also the OSS Program is a tremendous program. Um, I, don't, I don't know what to say, unless you're there and see the people and how grateful they are to what happens. You have a homeless person who says, you're gonna get me an ID, you're gonna get me a place to live, you're gonna get me work. We go, yeah. I ha I, you guys have a motto, dream big and deliver. I told Mayor Williams, I have one and the court has one that I've said for years, Arvada cares. And it's the type of thing that people don't think cities care about. But the court, and, and we have the ability because that's one of the few places that people ever have personal contact with the city. And they come in and they get treated a certain way. Uh, with these two programs, Arvada has cared and the court has cared. So I really thank you all for that. Um, and lastly, 
Judge Kurtz. Good, good uh, judge, good decision that you guys made to have. Um, I've been working with her, and the court is in good hands. I'm here to uh, continue to help her however, however is needed, help the city council however is needed. So from my heart to all of you guys, thank you very much for this honor. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And Judge Matassa, before you sit down, I'm going to see if I can exercise a little bit of privilege here while Mayor Williams returns to his seat. And I just wanted to make a couple of comments as, as well. Uh, first of all, I want to say as a city council member um, how fortunate I feel that we were able to, uh, to get your talents and your efforts. Uh, particularly at this time, your uh, work in rearranging the court, in uh, persisting with the court, in, in innovating with the court for uh, electronic court through all this is extraordinary, and, and uh, we are all so lucky to have had that. In my role on the court committee that uh, uh, Dot Miller and I serve, you always excellent to work with, and uh, it's always a pleasure to sit down and talk to you and talk about court issues, and it was clear that you really did care. You care about everything with the court. You care about the defendants. You cared about us. You cared about doing the right thing, and, and uh, I think that's a, a tremendous thing to see out of a public servant these days. And lastly, I'll just say I'm just really proud. Personally, I'm very proud of the job you have done. I'm really proud to know you, and I'm even more proud to get to call you a colleague. So thank you. Well, thank, thank you, you been, so it was, much. It was good to work with you. Right. Months. Mayor Pro Tem Miller. Thank you, Your Honor. Judge, I echo Council Member Marriott's um, sentiment. You and I uh, met on the court committee, and for any of you that don't know, he is an author, a published author. He has a trilogy, the Wellhouse trilogy, which I got. It's fantastic. Um, so thank you for all you did for stepping up when we needed you most. We appreciate you. You've done tremendous work, and thank you. I appreciate it. It was good working with you, too. Thank you. Mr. Jones. Well, we haven't had an opportunity to work on the, on the court committee. I just want to tell you that um, a real life experience, fortunately not by me, but by my nephew who had the, uh, the really good fortune to meet a few of our police officers uh, one day a few years ago, he ended up in your court. And uh, his mother, uh, my sister, was, um, was one of the first experiences that she ever had in a municipal court or in any court for that matter. And she couldn't stop talking about the experience. And I think that is evidenced in what you just shared with us that Arvada cares. And, and clearly from my sister's perspective and from her son's perspective, who it was a great learning moment, he recognized the power of the court, but he also recognized that the court was compassionate. So thank you for uh, carrying the, the compassionate side of the, the service that um, you do as a, as a judge in the city of Arvada. I think sometimes courts don't realize the effect they can have. <clears throat> as an attorney, I've been to most courts in the metro area and around Colorado, and this is one of the few courts in the last few years that have actually uh, done this uh, in, on the municipal court level. Because you know, if you go to county court and all, they have more at, they have more assets, right. they have things they can do. But this court has really tried to help. So yes. I appreciate well, you acknowledging that. Thank you very much. Ms. Simpson. Thank you, Your Honor. So Judge Matassa, we've never had the opportunity to no. work together, and I must say that is a shame. I've heard nothing but wonderful things. Um, but I just wanted to echo all of my colleagues and say thank you so much for all you did. You, you stepped in under one set of circumstances, and then the world kind of fell apart on all of us, and you, yeah. you led with grace and dignity, and you got the court through it. And I just want to say that you recognizing all of the staff tonight was a real testament to your leadership, because well, not that's, everyone takes That's how we made that. it through. Yeah, it's the, it's it's the staff, and I think I think Sharon and Mary would say that too. Yes. We couldn't have done it without them. And, and staff, just so you know, we, we see you, and thank you for everything that you do. You guys provide such a valuable service to this city. A lot of our residents come into you guys, and it may be one of the worst days that they've ever had. They come in when they're low, mm -hmm. and like you said, they care. You care, and sure. you help us get through and make the city better. So just thank you for everything that you do. All right, thank you, Mr. Fiber. 
Well, I won't add much more except I, what I appreciate most, and yes, you and I have not spoken that much, and that could be good or bad, I guess. It depends, you know. <laughs> Unlike the Joneses, apparently they show up in court a lot. <laughs> um, but I will say what I appreciate most is the fact that I was living through the presiding judge's eyes on your mentor program because that was a way for you to solve a need in our community before we had a probation officer. Right. So I appreciate the, the energy, the time, the thoughtfulness around our community's youth and really uh, becoming the mentor you needed to be to make sure that they were successful. And I think that that was probably the, the most the highlights for me is knowing that you were not even the presiding judge, you were a relief judge, and yet you would dedicate right. so much time towards the youth in our community who needs that time. So um, trying to c curtail them from maybe a, a line of crime to something to be more productive in, its, in their community. So I appreciate that the most. And, right. um, well, it, it did have an effect. And, you know, I felt that I was finally doing something um, worthwhile in my life. Mm -hmm. Not that not raising kids wasn't, but right. this was something different. Right. We were able to have an impact on families. And I appreciate that. And the OSS program mm -hmm. is good too, yeah. really. So thank so. you for all your service too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Ms. Ford, give you an opportunity. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, I'd like to just echo what everyone has said, Judge Matassa. We really appreciate everything that you've done for the court. You really provided a lot of uh, stability at a difficult time. And we, you've, you've just done a great job for us. So thank you so much for your service. Okay, thank you, Ms. Ford. And thank all of you again. You bet. Judge, I'll right. finish up here because okay. I always get to go last. It's the prerequisite of being the, the uh, mayor, I guess. But uh, we've given you a, a, a framed uh, recognition tonight, and I'm sure you've got other plaques on your wall for your years of service and other arenas. Uh, but I know the thing that probably one of your... Um, items that you've received that you told me about, uh, and I think it really speaks to what you've been able to do for our youth, is the young man who gave you a skateboard. Oh, yeah. That uh, he had painted and uh, was very, very proud of it, and he presented it to you in thanks for what you had done for him, and, and that kind of award means so much more than yeah. proclamation signed by the seven of us or, or other recognitions right. you have received. So. It's, uh, it's, in this, it's in my office, the relief judge office. It's there for anybody to see. It's his life. Mm -hmm. uh, the wheels are off of it. He has other skateboards. And um, he's a little older than normally who I would have had in. He's in his 20s, closer to 30. But he needed somebody to listen to him. And, and I don't know if how much you all understand that. When you deal with people every day, if you listen to them and give them a voice, they suddenly blossom. When you say, look at the homeless person, they're causing us trouble, they don't blossom. They feel victims. So, you know, I, and it's the same with, with families and with youth. So I'm glad I had that chance to do that. Yeah. So really do appreciate it, and I'm not planning on leaving Arvada, so... I'll be here. Very Thank good. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, with that, we'll move on to public comment. I have uh, four individuals who have signed up, and we may have others. Uh, Philip uh, DeLorenzo. <coughs> Evening, sir. Good evening. Um, thank you for allowing me to speak. Uh, I wanted to speak to you guys about the trash program that has been slammed down our throat. So I, I'm a resident of Arvada. I've lived here 48 years. I do know a little bit about trash removal. I owned a trash company, so I know what I'm talking about. You're charging fees that are taxes. You circumvented Tabor to call this charge a fee. Now I live in a homeowners association, so I already have trash service. All the service we need, but you're gonna bill me, I believe it's 88 cents a month on my sewer bill, for what? For a cleanup at the end of the year or a couple of times a year as Jason spoke to me about? I don't need your services. And you know, in theory, 88 cents a month is peanuts. 
But when you multiply it times the citizens of Arvada that are in HOAs, according to Jason, we're talking about close to $38,000 a month. That's $450,000 a year. What are you going to do with that? Crickets. Well, sir, so, so that I, you understand. I understand. Okay. I understand you're not going to respond. Right. Okay. There's so many things that have gone on. You held a meeting, it was either fall or summer, and I was here. Couldn't see the TV screen, couldn't hear the sound, okay? As I walked out, I ran into a couple of people that I knew from the trash business, happened to be with Republic Services. The company awarded the contract. They were dancing in the parking lot, knowing there was people coming out of there very frustrated. That's extremely unprofessional. I don't understand how people can act in such a way. But back to the election. Why did we not get to vote on this? We get to vote on taxes for the police, the fire department, other things in the city. You denied us of our vote. You know, Mark Twain so eloquently said, if our vote really mattered, they wouldn't let us vote. Lo and behold, you didn't let us vote. Shame on you guys. I know some of you voted against the program, but you got to vote. We didn't get to vote. I hope you sleep well at night because this is theft of service. It's theft for taxing people in advance for something they're never going to use. It makes no sense. It's nothing more than a money grab and you used COVID just like the people in Washington DC in the swamp used COVID to jam things down our throat. Shame on all of you. Next we'll call on, uh, is it Tom D'Angelo Listen up, Tom D'Agostino. Okay, thank you, thank I you. apologize. No problem. Uh, thank you, this is my second visit. I was here a couple months ago. And since the last meeting, I've done a lot of research. I've read everything that was written on this matter of trash hauling, okay? And it all boils down to a single obvious concern that any reasonable person would ask. Why was this issue not put on a ballot? There is no reason, there's no excuse, because in the notes it said the issue of ballot, no ballot, was brought up twice and discarded each time. So without any further discussion, a unilateral decision was made to ignore the popular vote and pass a mandate. Why? Why would the council would not address every the concern of, of, of all the constituents in Arvada without putting on a ballot? Who gave you the right to do it unilaterally? I don't know. Because it was not on the ballot, what, what follows, what I'm going to tell you, is a lot of suspicious behavior and, and findings. First of all, why would you ignore such a hot button issue when you, when you knew that people are agitated? Why would you do that? I don't know, but, but that brings up a lot of other questions. Secondly, those in the city council who voted against the issue cannot necessarily be held responsible for what what's going to happen, but it, it is going to happen. The voters are watching, and the voters may have a chance sometime in the near future, and I hope they do. But the most pressing issue is that some of the city council members feel that they're, they're emboldened now. And through executive fiat, you, you, during a, a COVID-19, you pass anything, you, you pass this, and that means that what do you, what's next? What are you going to pass next time that I don't know about? That's the most disturbing issue, is if you feel emboldened now, what's next? And the other one smacks of, uh, the other last issue is promoting a single hauler um, when money was exchanged between some of the people in, that were pushing the issue and, and, and the hauler themselves. This, this is pretty, pretty big stuff when it gets exposed, okay? so. I've tried to stay apolitical about this issue, but it's really not about politics. You can call this by any name you want, but this, this smells of a, of, a, of a power grab. And I'm not going to put, put up with this any longer. I'm, I'm, not, I, I'm not getting involved, I haven't gotten involved much, but this issue has changed my mind and I will stay involved because it, it regards my personal rights. So if, the, if the city council only 
put this up for vote, and a majority of the citizens, plus one person, voted in favor of the measure, I wouldn't be here. I, I, would, I would go with that because that's the way the rules are written. But this smells of corruption at the highest level, and I'm, I'm not going to be silent, silent at all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Vicki uh, Walbridge. My comments are directed to the council members who refuse to let the citizens vote on this trash issue. What right do you have to take the citizens vote away? Certainly not the phony speak up Arvada survey that was based on a poll of 300 people. What arrogant scheming you four demonstrated when you refused to let this go to a vote of the people. You purposely devised this corrupt game plan during a pandemic because you had a majority of one and wanted to push it through to satisfy your special interest group while stifling the will of the people. What arrogant disconnect you four demonstrated when you said it was too complicated for the voters to understand. We the people are smart enough to know corruption when we see it and would have never agreed to the horrible contract you signed costing Arvada residents millions. What arrogance and discrimination you four demonstrated when you chose to impose an extortion tax on the residents who can least afford it, the residents who don't live in HOAs, and those on fixed incomes. Many of you, if not all of you, live in HOAs, which will not be charged the extortion opt-out tax of $4.25. You tell us to support local business, but you devise a multi-million dollar contract with an out-of-state billion dollar company with an F rating. You are hypocrites. And now you're disguising and misleading the residents by using clever wording, minimum service, to hide the term opt-out. There can only be one reason you changed your terminology. Your goal is to confuse, mislead, and is downright deceptive. Your minimum service is a lie when in actuality we're not getting any service. $4.25 is paid directly to Republic, a private party, as an extortion tax on the people who can least afford it, simply for not using Republic. That's not minimum service. That is no service. I call it communism. The other 88 cents is to hire two additional city employees to handle the billing and complaints with Republic. Two additional city employees will certainly cost taxpayers more. You want us to believe that we're getting the added benefit of a large item drop off and re leaf recycling in the fall. No added benefit there for those who opt out. Once more, this screams discrimination. Who are you to impose your city scheme on me are you going to assign my supermarket next? What day I can shop? Ban FedEx and UPS so only postal trucks are driving on our streets? If a new restaurant opens that you decide we must support, are you going to assess an extortion tax because I don't order food from that restaurant on my assigned day? Will you vote to rezone property so you can ram through an Amazon distribution center which will introduce thousands of trucks into the city and concentrate it on a residential side of town. It won't be an occasional trash truck. It will be 24-7 traffic, a semi-trailers, and delivery trucks. Thank you, ma'am. Next, I'll call on Daniel. And Daniel, I always mispronounce your last name, and I apologize. I say Mondragon, and I, I don't think that's quite right. You didn't take Spanish in high school? No. One La Dragon. Latin. One Dragon. <laughs> good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor, Council Members. It is good to be with you tonight. Um, I, uh, first of all, wish to say thank you for your uh, consideration and your deliberations with regards to um, uh, look at the uh, DEI, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Task Force. Appreciate your uh, consideration of that. Um, identity. We all have identities, um, multiple. Uh, last week I had the opportunity with my work to be reminded of one of my favorites. Uh, I got to do a grant uh, proposal to the Denver Broncos and in it, it, they gave me the opportunity to say, what's been your uh, um, 
uh, association with the Denver Broncos. And I, I noted my 20 years of being a season ticket holder and being there when we beat the Raiders to go to our first Super Bowl and getting to help pass the um, goal stands up the south stands. I'm a lifelong Bronco fan, and I put up with tolerate the Raiders flags in my neighborhood. I'm a lifelong Coloradan. I'm proud of my roots in North Denver and equally proud of my roots here in Arvada. Both places helped to form me and who I am, and I am grateful for those experiences and for the many people um, on whose shoulders I stand. And it was great to be here tonight to, to see the, uh, the award and to be mindful of incredible people that have formed our communities. I look forward to seeing how our communities continue to stri uh, strive for growth, for inclusion, for betterment, for all citizens in the future. Um, so thank you. Thank you again for uh, making it possible for us to take a look at, as a city, how we can thrive, making Arvada welcoming, safe for everyone. As usual, as in so many places throughout my life, I am the diversity in the room. And I look forward to an Arvada that is even more intentionally diverse. I do have a motto that um, success doesn't happen by magic, but through intentional action. And you know that. Arvada is as it is today because of your intentional action to make Arvada what it is. And so it's time for us to take another step in inclusion, in intentionality, of welcome, of bringing in new businesses, new homeowners that uh, enliven our community. I'm hopeful that someday my daughter and her wife, when they think about buying a house, that they'll look at Arvada because they'll go, Arvada is a good place. It's a safe place for me to be. So thank you. Good night. Thank you, sir. Ms. Rush, do we have anybody else signed up to speak? Thank you. I assume they're bringing her up. There we go. Hi. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Thank you very much for taking a, let me uh, speak for a few minutes. Mine goes back to the waste options. You sent out information and surveys. It's great that you want to encourage people to recycle. You recapped in the Arvada report about the new options for the waste collection during July, occurring, coming in July. You mentioned cost with and without various carts, and you included benefit program. A few things from my perspective that were missing and misleading. Citizens of Arvada, as many of what you've already heard, didn't have an opportunity to vote on the plan. You have now imposed on the residents an additional charge, whether they change haulers or remain with the current one. Few made the choice for many. This fee will be divided between uh, the town and Republic, Republic charged for their service in addition to gets money, even if not serving residents of Arvada. Is that really a benefit? What is planned with the monies of the town will we receive? Will we have a say in that? Will we know where they're going? The decision made by four of the seven for the 100,000 residents of Arvada didn't take into consideration the socioeconomics socio of many of the residents like the elderly and those on fixed incomes. You say there'll be better customer service for the Republic. Many restaurant re <laughs> residents voice great discontent with Republic who have had them in the past and have discontinued their services. You disregard that many haulers provide outstanding quality service that many residents will continue. You say there will be a fewer trucks on the road reducing air and noise pollution. There will not be fewer as many residents will continue to use their current hauler who provide excellence in service. <clears throat> you state another benefit of lower costs for many residents. You have now just added an additional fee and for many that is way too much. Who really benefits from the additional fees? You say leaf recycling and bulk drop-off events will now be available. That's great. Have you considered how many people will actually be able to benefit from that service? Lastly, in the March Arvada report, all of you on the council had nice pictures of yourself supporting some local businesses. 
Although there may have been some extensive conversation with some wonderful local haulers, I question whether there was some thinking out of the box of an option that could have been considered to really show that you do indeed personally believe in the words printed on the page with your pictures. Supporting local business is more important than ever. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Ms. Rush, do we have anyone else signed up? Okay, and there's no one else in council chambers, so I'll close the public comment portion. Move on to the consent agenda. It's rather lengthy tonight. Uh, we've got resolution 21031, which is a resolution declaring the termination of the development agreement between the Arvada Urban Renewal Authority, City of Arvada, and Solvent One Limited Liability Company. Next, we have a resolution accepting donations of rifle rated ballistic armor equipment for officers of the Arvada Police Department. Next, we have a resolution authorizing the city of Arvada to purchase chemicals for the water treatment plant operations in an amount not to exceed approximately $874,000 annually. Next one's a resolution authorizing an agreement buying between the city of Arvada and Carrero Carola Engineers, Inc. in an amount not to exceed approximately $130,000 for the Ralston WTP Solids Handling Study Project. Next is a resolution authorizing the First Amendment to an agreement between Arvada and Schultz Industries Incorporated to increase the contract amount from $200,000 to $250,000 for landscape maintenance in the second year. Next we have a resolution authorizing a renewal construction contract agreement buying between Arvada and Triple M Construction LLC for the 2021 concrete replacement project in an amount not to exceed Four million four hundred and approximately thirty-four thousand dollars, formerly Project Number Nineteen uh, ST Ten, then Twenty ST Ten, now Project Twenty One ST Ten. Next is a resolution accepting an annexation petition concerning Lazy Susan, generally located at one six seven nine zero and one six seven seven zero West Sixty Third Place, finding that that petition substantially compliant with the state statute CRS thirty one twelve one zero seven and setting a public hearing for April 5th, 2021, 615 p.m. for City Council to determine whether that area meets the requirements of the statute 1312-104 and 105 and is considered eligible for annexation. Next is a resolution authorizing an agreement between Arvada and Asphalt Specialties Company for construction of CSB 21-ST-01 pavement resurfacing program in an amount not to exceed approximately $3.1 million. Next one is a resolution adopting a revised administrative fee schedule for the Arvada Police Department. That's followed by a resolution authorizing the issuance of a purchase order in the amount of 200, approximately $227,000 to Transwest Truck Trailer RV for the purchase of asphalt patch truck. Next is a resolution authorizing a construction contract agreement by and between the City of Arvada and Hammond Infrastructure for construction of 18 ST40 Ralston Road, Yukon Street to Garrison Street in an amount not to exceed $12,360,000. And the final resolution tonight is a resolution authorizing the issuance of a blanket purchase order in the amount of $600,000 to Hill Petroleum Company for the purchase of fuel used in city vehicles and equipment. Mr. Marriott. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> I move that resolutions R21-031 through R21-042 all be approved. Motions for approval of the consent agenda. Ms. Ford, how do you vote tonight? I vote yes. Thank you. Displaying the votes, the remaining six council members have voted yes as well, so that passes unanimously. We have no resolutions tonight. Ms. Miller, do you want to present us with the first reading? Absolutely, Your Honor. I move that Council Bill 21-007, an ordinance authorizing the Second Amendment to the 2021 operating and capital budget in the amount of $1,650,000 and authorizing an intergovernmental agreement between the City of Arvada and the State of Colorado acting by and through the Department of Transportation pertaining to the signage replacements at West 64th Avenue and Sim Street and West 80th <coughs> Avenue and Vance Drive, project number 20-TC-01 
and Council Bill 21-008, an ordinance authorizing the third amendment to the 2021 operating and capital budget in the amount of $450,000 and authorizing an intergovernmental agreement between the city of Arvada and the state of Colorado acting by and through the Department of Transportation pertaining to the signal replacements at West 57th Avenue and Kipling Parkway, project number 20-TC-02 be approved on first reading ordered published in full and public hearing to be set for march the 15th 2021 at 6 15 p.m with the minor correction that it's west 58th avenue and kipling parkway instead of 57th avenue with that ms ford how do you vote yes and the rest of us have voted yes as well. That passes seven to zero. Next, we'll move on to public hearings. I'll open the public hearing on Council Bill 21006, an ordinance amending Article 5, International Residential Code, Section 18-181, Climatic and Geographical Design Criteria of Chapter 18, Buildings and Building Regulations of the Arvada City Code. Mr. Devon. Yes, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, you may recall, but recall back on January the 11th of this year, uh, you updated the floodplain and firm maps uh, uh, at that time at that council meeting. Uh, and this uh, action will update the International uh, Building Code, amend the International Building Code uh, uh, under uh, ordinance uh, Article 5, uh, amending Article 5 International Residential Code the sections 18-181, uh, it basically will uh, allow the building code uh, in our community to be updated to reflect the changes in the flood map. We're recommending approval. Very good, is there any member of the public that's signed up to speak on this tonight? There is not, I'll close the public comment portion, open it up for city council questions or actions. Mr. Marion. Thank you, Your Honor. If nobody has any questions, I'll go ahead and make a motion here. So I move that Council Bill 21-006, an ordinance amending Article 5, International Residential Code, Section 18-181, Climactic and Geographical Design Criteria of Chapter 18, Buildings and Building Regulations of the Arvada City Code, be approved on final reading, numbered 4753, and ordered published by title only. Ms. Ford, how do you vote? I vote yes. The remaining six have voted yes as well. That passes unanimously. Uh, on this next item, um, Ms. Morris, do you want me to open the public hearing and then consider a motion to continue? That's what I would suggest, yes. And what date are we continuing it to? We are continuing it to March 15th. Okay, I'll open the public hearing on the conditional use application for Clear Creek Commons, approximately located at the southeast corner of West 52nd Avenue and Marshall Street. Mr. Marriott. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> um, because of a noticing re uh, requirement, I will move that the public hearing on the conditional use application for Clear Creek Commons, approximately located at the southeast corner of West 52nd Avenue and Marshall Street, be continued and set for public hearing on March 15th, 2021 at 6.15 p.m. Ms. Ford, how do you vote? I vote yes. And the other six of us have voted yes as well. That passes unanimously. That concludes our public hearings for tonight. Uh, do we have anyone signed up for additional public comment? No, there's no one. Okay. I just want to make a comment about public comment. It's a little bit difficult sometimes because the theory of public comment is it's the citizen's opportunity to come before us and tell us what's on their mind. And sometimes what, they, what is on their mind is questions for us or they want to pose questions to us. And it may look bizarre as all get out that we don't respond to those questions, but that's because that's not the purpose of public comment. At times, 
there'll be specific questions or issues that are being raised and we will then direct it to the city manager and his team to get back to those individuals. But if you see us sitting up here not responding and, and frankly responding to criticism at times uh, where, you know, and all of us have been the subject over the years of, of a citizen coming forward, being upset with either us in toto or uh, as individuals in terms of our roles on city council. Uh, it's not the forum for us to respond back. It's not the forum for us to get into a debate with our citizens. It's an opportunity for them to speak what's on their mind and for us to respectfully listen, and that's what we do. So with that, uh, Mr. Devin, I'm sorry, council reports, anything? Mr. Pfeiffer, I'll let you lead off. I don't have a report, but I have a, a, just a couple questions because there were some comments made because of public comment. And, and for those that know me, integrity for all of us offends me when they attack our integrity, even if it's my peers and I don't always agree with them. But integrity is probably it's one of the highest things that this council will hold. And the last 10 years, I've observed lots of council members have high integrity for what we do. But the question about not uh, the local question kind of bothers me that there was a claim that uh, we didn't we didn't do any local trash companies. So what are Vada trash companies are there and did they bid? Because I know the answer, but I'd just like to know if staff Well, we invited uh, right. we invited several companies to um, be interested in our process for um, soliciting bids mm -hmm. uh, We had four uh, Companies that actually submitted bid bids none of those companies were actually based in Arvada. And so any of uh, local Arvada companies didn't bid at all, so. And I don't think there is an Arvada trash there, company. There, 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 we're not aware of an Arvada, of a company that has a base of operations in Arvada. We are aware of companies that serve Arvada, obviously. Yeah, right, they're more regional right. by that point. Right. And then the second question, I know people talk about this trash uh, large item pickup. Uh, maybe we can reflect back in our communications, maybe Ben can help with this, is remember when we did the uh, trash days every other year, I think it would be probably behoove us to remind people how much that cost the taxpayers and why we couldn't do it anymore and also that the trash haulers refuse to bid on it anymore. And so therefore we're actually returning a service that was demanded by our citizens uh, for the item and I think it's a good compromise because we couldn't get the trash companies to do something, at least this is something uh, trajectorily in the conversation in the right direction of solving that problem. Maybe we can uh, explain that a little bit more because if I recall correctly, that service cost us closer to a half million dollars a year uh, and also at the point where we asked uh, to do it, um, trash service companies plan out refused us from doing that anymore. So I'm, I'm glad that we're bringing it back and it is worth uh, sharing some of that tax burden versus uh, you know every you know us taking it out of our Jennifer, uh, general funds to fund that. So. Just wanted to clarify uh, what that fee for service or that fee is, that minimum fee service, is a value that majority of the Arvadans do appreciate if they reflect back onto those trash days. Correct. Yeah, so maybe yep. that's something we can put into our communication. Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ms. Simpson. Thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to take a quick moment to commend the team at the over at Apex, both the uh, staff as well as the board. I had the great privilege this past weekend of getting to go to the Seacrest Center, which has been fully renovated over the past few years. Um, it's just a magnificent facility now, and one of the final things that they're going to be adding is going to be a playground. And what's really unique is because the playgrounds are typically uh, something that the city does, but this is going to be a disability access access playground as well as a sensory access playground for our residents, um, our children, and really a lot of our adults too, um, who, who have those disabilities so that they can feel included and have the same amenities that others get to enjoy. And so I just wanted to strongly um, commend them and thank them for doing that for our community and also our city parks team for doing the lights access so that this would be possible um, not just when the sun is shining. So thank you. I want to take a moment tonight to um, acknowledge, acknowledge the passing of someone who was very special to me and was very special to this community and, and we've not met in person since his passing. Jed Ladd 
passed away on Valentine's Day, which doesn't come as a huge surprise to me because Jed would use any date that he could to to make something memorable. And I, any time from now on, when I think of Valentine's Day, part of my day will be spent thinking about Jed Ladd. He was an institution in this city. He was uh, someone who came to Arvada as a long-haired hippie uh, back in, I think, the late 70s um, and opened, had, came from the dark horse in, in Boulder. And those of us who have spent way too much time in the dark horse in Boulder uh, know what a place that was and is but came to open up a companion restaurant in Arvada, uh, which he coincidentally named Laddie's. And it became quite the gathering place for people of all types in our great city who, who would go there, uh, enjoy a Laddie's burger, would enjoy a green beer on St. Patrick's Day, who would enjoy just the company of being together in a, a rather eclectic place here in our community. And when Jed came here, he was definitely outside the mold of the traditional Arvada um, establishment uh, type of person. But he got involved in this community. Uh, he would stand up to injustice when he saw it, when uh, leaders of the city back in the day forced him to put in a sidewalk in front of Laddie's when he did a remodel project on that place. He decided to make some lemonade out of the lemons and started putting together the world's shortest uh, sidewalk parade. And he invited the city leaders to participate in it and turned it into a fundraiser, as he did with many things, between uh, mud volleyball and uh, crab races and crazy things that he would do in his establishment. But even after the time for Laddie's had passed, Jed stayed very involved in our community. He became a member, uh, much to the chagrin of some and who wondered, how is he going to be on this? But he served on our liquor board um, and did an admirable job of really working with establishments to keep them, help keep them in compliance, treated uh, all parties fairly in those, in those public hearings that, that went forward with that. He also served the community in a number of other ways. He was very active uh, and had been... Uh, demonized by alcohol through his through his life and and for many many years maintained after that sobriety and was um, a, a inspiration at the primary uh, purpose club I know that he has acted as a mentor to a number of people who were um, part of the primary purpose club getting them back into a better place in their life he's also been very instrumental in working uh, with the Lamar Street Center uh, and with other places as well with the Nine Healthcare. Uh, just a, a guy that gave back so much to his community and so um, for us to be together tonight for the first time since his passing, I wanted to, to honor him and to say that there is going to be a virtual uh, memorial service uh, since Jed passed from COVID. There were uh, his family, his three daughters are very sensitive in terms of a large public gathering. And frankly, um, it's going to be too large of a family gathering or a gathering to to celebrate his life, to be able to do it uh, right now. So they're putting together a, a virtual uh, program. Stay tuned for that. We'll push that out as much as we can. Um, Jed wanted to, as, as a lasting memorial to him, he had a little dog, Gizmo, that he went to the park with and uh, Memorial Park and, and along the Ralston Creek Trail. And so we're going to be doing some fundraising for a uh, memorial bench for him, and say, so stay tuned on that. And then sometime either in the summer or fall, we are planning to get a, a get-together where people can come together to, to again, celebrate Jed's life. But uh, So stay tuned. And... Um, Rest well, my friend. Mr. Devon? Yes, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, next Monday we will have a workshop, and that workshop will include uh, update on waste hauling uh, and a uh, update on the Old Town Street closures plan. Ms. Morris? Nothing from me, Your Honor. Thank you all very much. We stand adjourned. <laughs>